I was a landscape gardener and horticulturist for 35 years. I've worked out of a truck most of the years I've been working. And one of the things that just drives me crazy is not being, not having the tools that you need when you're trying to do something and making 10 or 20 trips back and forth to the truck or in the case of a homeowner, back to your tool shed or your garage to get the things that you need to work. So I've gotten to where I carry things around on my belt. I hate having stuff in my pockets. And of course, I've noticed that most women don't even have pockets in their pants for the most part and so putting stuff on a belt is handy for me. Beyond what you can carry on your belt without looking like G.I. Joe, here's a real inexpensive little carpenter's pouch that uh, you can just put all kinds of gear in, uh, get a, a web belt from a sporting goods store. I think they even sell them in the, in the hardware stores, uh, military surplus. Just makes it real handy to where you can carry quite a few things out into the field with you if you're uh, going out to work and you won't be making all those trips back and forth. Another thing that uh, I have started using uh, this year is uh, so many different of uh, the big box stores and uh, have, have all kinds of little tote bags that you can buy for uh, 99 cents up uh, near the cash register. And I've taken to uh, using these things and kind of putting categories of tools in them so that when I go up to the shelf, I can say, oh, there's the, uh, you know, the trowel and the pruning tools. That stuff is just right there and I can just pick it up and walk right out the door because it's already pretty well organized and I know exactly what's in there. These uh, uh, bucket caddies, or I suppose they have a bunch of different brand names, have been out for quite a, a while now, but it's a really handy uh, tool for being able to carry things out in the garden. There's all kinds of pouches for uh, putting tools in, stuff that has where it, uh, uh, you know, a little breathability here, your, whatever your favorite garden sprayer is that you put on the end of your hose, put it back in wet so it's not getting all your stuff wet inside. Some other little compartments where you can take a package of seeds that you're going out in the garden with and uh, stick those down in here. This caddy also has pockets on the inside, so it's pretty handy for things that have a longer handle on them, rather, where you can get them down in and it's not sticking up and maybe poking you in the eye or being in your way. So uh, I think this is a great way to uh, organize tools and put them where, uh, you know, where you need them. Here I've got all of my pruning tools and you always imagine you know what you're going to run across when you go out to do some garden task. But then you get out and you say, boy, I wish I had a saw instead of the pruners or instead of the loppers or whatever. So here we got the bucket that's got the, a saw, a bow saw, it's got some loppers, it's got my pruners and my holster. I've got a little uh, folding up uh, saw here and pretty well ready to tackle anything that might come up in terms of, uh, in terms of pruning. What we're looking at now, so many people are gonna be planting new trees and do that in a, in a good year. And after the trouble we've had this year with the ice storm, there's gonna be a lot of new trees going in. So I think it's really important that we talk about a couple of the things you do, not about the planting, but about the corrective pruning that you do. And the easiest way to do this is before you plant the tree when it's still actually laying down, because that way you don't have to get up on a ladder. I want to get up here and just kind of show you a couple of the things that happen with trees. The nurserymen, they want to make branches because we all want to see trees with branches. So you can see here, this is actually where the original tip of the tree was, where this little funny stub is. It was tipped out in order to make the induced branching on the tree because we all want to see a tree with lots of branches. And the nurserymen do that in order to get the tree looking good for market. The problem is, is that we have these two leaders now. Here was the original one. It was cut back and so we have two shoots that have been have developed you can see they're almost exactly equal in both in in size and also in terms of height i'm going to do a couple of things here you can see even the side branch that should be subordinate to the top is also vying for leadership and so the first thing i'm going to do is to come back in in fact i can see where this one has been tipped back as well so i don't want to make this branch the subordinate uh, to, to the whole to the tip of the tree so just coming in for this side branch, I'm going to take this whole piece out here. And I, in fact, the other thing I'm going to do is come in and kind of tip this out so that it really knows that it's subordinate to the rest of the tree. All of these branches are a little bit confused. Here's another one that has a little bit of a tip in it. And I'm going to do the same thing with it. It's trying to go up, which means it's saying there's a little confusion here. Who's in charge? The big 
issue that we talked about is this. You can see where there is this little uh, bit of growth right down through here. It's just squeezed tissue where these two branches are so competitive with each other that they squeeze the tissue up. As the branches get larger, this becomes more pronounced and acts as a wedge to actually force these two things apart. So what we're trying to do really is to decide which one looks like it has the best potential as the leader for this tree. And it's a little bit tough to do. You can see this one looks like the straighter and the better one, but it has maybe not quite as strong of attachment as, the, as this one. It, this one looks like it's just coming straight up out of the tree. So a lot of times it's just sort of a judgment call that you have to decide what you're gonna do. I'm gonna opt for this one because it looks more like the top of a tree to me. It's straighter. So I'm, once again, just like I did with the branch, I'm gonna come in on this side and I'm gonna take out the branch that I want to uh, dispense with the tip of that and that way everything else is going to be the hormones will dictate that this uh, tree uh, all the side branches are subordinate to this tip and now we have a tree that really looks like a tree this winter and the uh, ice storm of 2009 is just a real heartbreak for those of us who love trees and uh, all kinds of gardeners alike. And we're going to have a lot of things that we'll need to do to get ourselves enthused about gardening this year, starting out with young trees when maybe we had big trees. But on the other hand, we'll be able to plant some things in the sun that we couldn't, uh, didn't have a sunny spot for before. One of the important things we want to do as we're replacing our trees is to make sure they get off to a good start by doing some corrective pruning as we're putting the trees in the ground just to really give them a chance to prolong their life. And to make that a lot more handy, we've got tools like this bucket caddy that we can just pile a bunch of stuff in, uh, pruning saws and loppers and uh, just anything that we might need in order to avoid all those repeated trips back to the tool shed or to the truck. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm Scott Starr with the Botanic Garden of the Ozarks, and this is another Tools and Techniques.